I'm Johnny Vegas, and you're listening to Cop Talk with Dunk. And all you other Liverpool sites, just stop embarrassing yourself, all right? Yo, what up? This your boy Smooth, straight from New York. You're listening to Cop Talk Podcast. Remember this, you never walk alone, but if you fuck with us, you walk with a limp. All right, guys, how's it going? It is Tuesday, the 13th of June, 2023, and you're listening to the Cop Talk Podcast in association with Football Club Shares dot com where you can buy real shares in real football clubs and I get a kickback. Yeah, go on. Go and do it. <laughs> How's it going guys? Hey look, got a griff guys, you know what I'm saying? What's going on? Uh right. Let's have a look, uh news wise. There's been a lot of speculation and absolute regurgitated nonsense this week. What I like to do is look at what videos I've put out to jog my memory. Gabri Vega, right, so Gabri Vega, I got told this morning that we are definitely sniffing around that situation, right? I can't really add much more to it than that. I know a couple of weeks ago, or within the last two weeks, you know what my memory's like. I said to you uh, that this kid is, you know, someone... You see, like, I don't know if you can tell just from audio, but I put my finger and my thumb on my nose in between my eyebrows and closed my eyes to recall that memory of mine. (laughs) It's fucking terrible, is it? Uh, I I know, uh, he says again with his eyes closed, that within the last couple of weeks, I said that that was a player that we should keep an eye on. Now, it's easy to say that when his player's been linked with us left, right and centre, and he's been linked with us as well. Um, but it depends who's saying it to me, you know. And I, I was told initially, don't, you need to be keeping an eye on him. Ignore all the, the, the obvious and big things that are flying around at the moment, but keep an eye on him. And that person followed up with me this morning and said, yep, yep, Liverpool are considering. I think that would be a good way of putting it, because there is a release clause of £34 million, pounds, I believe. But I, I, I just wonder if maybe he is a fallback option should something else not work. I don't know, but I can confirm to you If you listen to anything I say to you guys, he is definitely a possible, all right? So we see all these links, you know, forget the ITKs, forget the newspapers, forget the speculation. All I can say to you is definitely one to watch. Right, Uh, Evan Endicker, he's definitely not signing for Liverpool because he's going to Roma. Now, uh, I've just had a drink of my Pepsi Max Cherry, which is always a very silly thing to do when I start a podcast because it's made me a little bit ghastly. So if you hear me stumble a little bit with my, my words, that's why I'm trying not to belch. <laughs> okay. Uh, Endicker. So he's going to Roma. Uh, Liverpool did inquire about him many, many weeks ago, uh, but ended their interest initially. Uh, uh, not initially. What's the word? Uh, well, immediately, I think, was the word I was looking for. It began with the, an I. Yeah. Uh, immediately. They did not pursue it, and that uh, the same attitude was uh, shared by, you know, all I can say is someone at Liverpool Football Club said, well, we're not pursuing that, and neither is X, Y, Z. Other major European clubs, if you like, um, that because the, the agent, the, was some of the, the demands were astronomical. So without getting into specifics, as I don't know them, you know, that's going to be like the, the sign-on fee, uh, the, the cuts involved. Just the whole package was too expensive. And, you know, there's no such thing as a free transfer. So you know you're going to pay something, and you're going to pay big, um, you know, for something like that. But it sounded too much, but not too much for Roma. So it looks like he's going there. We can scratch it off. That's a good thing, because some people have been trying to suggest that we're still sniffing around him. But I think, you know, I've said on, you know, the videos and on the podcasts, you know, that it didn't look like it was going anywhere. It was too expensive. I did a video today, Manchester United sold Liverpool next, question mark, not, not a statement. And, um, you know, a friend of mine, uh, Paul, uh, well, you know, I say a friend, I've never met the lad, he's a Cop Talk VIP member. He's someone that has supported me immensely over the years, not just through, uh, you know, membership uh, contributions, if you like, because that's what the, the membership is, it's a contribution, it's like a donation to, to keep me going kind of thing. Uh, but he's also gone way in above and beyond that and he's a very good kid he's known on the members website as Paul Ray Uh, he messaged me in the early hours of this morning one o'clock I think Spanish time uh, FYI hearing that United shares are up 14% at 4pm PST in after hours trading over a quarter of a million trades in six hours sale could be done 
not that I care about United, but it might push FSG. So my video today was about that, sort of like, you know, I think that Manchester United being up for sale is something that FSG I don't would, would be monitoring and certainly would not sell Liverpool Football Club until they saw the outcome of that. I think it gives a good idea on valuation, etc. You can't say, well, what about Chelsea? They were recently sold because that was a quick sale. Uh, controversial things going on with the ownership there. All gone very quiet, all that, hasn't it? Did that money ever go to anywhere? Wasn't it supposed to go to Ukraine or something? I, I don't know about that. I'd love someone to, to update me on that front. Um, so, yeah, that video was about, you know, Man United being sold, what might happen with Liverpool next and things like that. So, if you're wondering, there's nothing for me that I can add to this. It wasn't news. It's just like what I've read out to you there and basically to keep an eye on what happens with United. Uh, you know, my my opinion is if the Glazers... Is it? It's thundering. It's thundering. Sorry. It, I thought, what's that noise? It's an absolutely beautiful day outside but uh, and it's sunny, but we had a pre-emergency warning this morning issued by the town hall, you know, on social media saying that storms are due. Uh, so, you know, at some point I might have to run outside. Not because there's an ice cream van going past. My washing's outside, you know what I mean? So if it starts raining, they'll have to break off. Um, so, yeah, you know, basically I thought that if the Glazers held on to Manchester United, that would be terrible for Liverpool because I think our lot would do the same because they'd think, well, hang on, they've seen some. These fuckers know what they're doing, guys. Uh, Mbappe speculation, another video, Salah and PSG in brackets. It says, obviously, Mbappe has indicated that he wants out. That could be, you know, first of all, I put a tweet out last night when that came out on at Duncan Oldham, I think, and maybe at Cop Talk, I can't remember. Uh, and there is at Cop Talk TV, by the way, and Cop Talk Podcast and Cop Talk members on Twitter and Facebook. There's pages and fucking accounts for everything if you follow any of these things. If you if you follow the podcast as you are doing, you if you've got Twitter, you should follow Cop Talk Podcast and the Facebook page. Um, so the Mbappe stuff came out and I was like, oh my God, I, you know, please no. Because what we're going to see is Mbappe being ridiculously linked with Liverpool. And already the Liverpool echo are including shite today about Mbappe. You know, what he said a year ago, this, that and the other. So they're going to clickbait the fuck out of you. The ITKs are going to wind you up. Uh, just fucking, do you know what I mean? If we had ambitious owners, can you imagine what that would have been like? If you'd have said, right, we've just signed Bellingham and now we're going to target a player like Mbappe. Do you know what I mean, guys? But we haven't got ambitious owners, have we? So... What's the point in getting depressed? So uh, getting excited, you might as well be depressed. Um, with regards to Salah, you know, you've got to think about, you know, if will they start sniffing around Salah uh, PSG? So those are rumours that we, may, we might start to see as a result of that. Yesterday I put a video out about Benjamin uh, Pavard uh, and it sounds like Liverpool are not pursuing that. Uh, it seems that there's Liverpool are... Uh, there had been initial inquiries there. I can't remember exactly what I said in the video. It can't be much. It's only four minutes long, which is usually my intro. Um, there is uh, the, the video. It says second midfielder a priority. It sounds like the emphasis Liverpool are working on getting this second midfielder in the door before looking at other positions. So we'll have to see about that. I also did a video called It's Going to Get Worse. This was about social media and Twitter because, you know, Twitter can uh, spread a lot of rumours, right? I love Twitter. Twitter's my go-to. I spend my life on Twitter, but not to do with Liverpool Football Club or football at all. I hardly follow or interact on my personal account with regards football, and even on the Cop Talk account on, on Twitter, I don't do much, do you know what I mean? Because it's a toxic environment. I don't want to be arguing with teenagers and shit like that, do you know what I mean, little punks? Um, but I do like Twitter for my own interests. But it's going to get worse in terms of speculation and rumours and, spec uh, and the likes, because and the people that deliberately mislead right because revenue sharing is coming to twitter and this basically means in a nutshell without having to watch a 33 minute long video that for the the more people that reply on tweets the more money the person that owns the account is going to make so you're not going to see people locking comments down so put something controversial on get a lot of interaction even if it's people saying you're a wanker don't believe you go back to kfc you fucker you know there's one of those accounts out there where the lad you know, apparently works with KFC, but considers himself an ITK. That is obviously, uh, it's, it's more of a parody account. But to be honest with you, it's just someone making some money, right? Uh, but some people are gullible and believe it. But whether you believe it or not, if you follow it and you comment, that person's going to make a lot of money. So you're going to see more and more and more ridiculous stuff on Twitter. Because once you get the revenue share, if you've got loads of replies in the comments to your tweet, they're going to start making money. At the moment, they can't, but that's coming. Uh, so be warned, it's going to get worse on there. And all the more reason to follow Cop Talk, whether it's the podcast, Cop Talk TV, uh, or the Cop Talk VIP members, which I personally think 
is amazing, all right, because it cuts out all that guff. Um, Kone on, off, on, off, on, off was another one. You know, people, apparently last week he'd agreed terms, you know, and was undergoing a medical, as was Turam and all that. I didn't tell you any of that, but that's what other people told you. And then a couple of days later, they were saying, oh, it's off, Liverpool have pulled out. How can you pull out with someone that was never on in the first place? Do you know what I'm saying, guys? So oh, when I, well, let me be specific. When I say never on in the first place, there is interest there. We know that Liverpool had talks with Kone's camp twice last week, Wednesday and Friday, and I assume Turam as well, somewhere along the line. We just don't have specific updates consider, you know, relating to that. What I mean is it's very easy to go online, say something's happening, and then two days later deny it because nothing's happened. You know, So these people create that shit. So when I say... Uh, Kone on, off, on, off, on, off. It's basically, you know, I'm, I'm telling you that this is just the idiots that have told you all that, right? So you don't need to be too concerned about that. Liverpool are definitely interested in Kone and Thuram, but keep an eye uh, on the main man that I mentioned earlier, Gabri Vega, as well. It doesn't sound like anything's happening with Lavia at the moment. It sounds like Liverpool made an inquiry and backed off for the time being. So that's roughly what I've been talking about in my videos, all right? Um, now, if we were to look at the like Liverpool transfer news, speculation, what's in the press today, let's have a look at Julian Timber. He's been talking about his future. Uh, he's been with Liverpool considerably. And the Netherlands defender has been quoted as saying, I'm not in talks with Ajax right now. I spoke briefly to Sven Mislintat in the beginning. My agent had a good talk with him a few times, but it's not like we're talking right now. Will I stay with Ajax anyway? I'm not sure one to watch guys you do have to keep an eye on that one i think uh we have uh liverpool pushing to make kefren thuram their next signing this summer after alexis mcallister uh you know speculation still there now radio station talk sport have underlined strong interest from liverpool in the midfielder who will represent france at the upcoming under 21 european championship so Idle speculation, just more speculation, regurgitation. It's talk sport. They're basically... Uh, I, I like talk sport. I've got to be honest with you, a lot of Liverpool, former Liverpool players on there, so don't have a go at me if I listen to talk sport. Uh, there's no boycott of talk sport or anything. Um, I like it. I like to listen to Simon Jordan, but when it comes to transfer news on their website, they're very speculative. Uh, in fact, talk sport recently approached me and asked me if I would work with them. Uh, you know, I mentioned this on the members' website. You know, in, in with the podcast, actually, it was actually it was specifically in relation to this podcast. Um, but uh, you know, I'm not doing that. But um, they, they just they, 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 they just click me in you or whatever. Uh, Juventus midfielder Arthur wants to return to the Premier League this summer. Uh, he's 26 and he played once for Liverpool uh, during an early season Champions League cameo. And uh, you know, reports from the Daily Mail reckon the Brazilian wants to have another crack at the Premier League. But as yet, no one's been named as having an interest. He can't be that fucking shy, can he? Premier League title race odds from Bet365. Man City favourites 4-6. to six. Arsenal 7-1. to one. Liverpool and Manchester United 8-1. to one. Chelsea 12s. Newcastle 14-1. to one. Quite insulting for Newcastle, wouldn't you think? What about an each-way bet? James Ward-Prowse value 2i for Liverpool. That's according to the Daily Mail. Uh, the Southampton man was, of course, uh, linked with us uh, Earlier in the, in the summer, but also again, uh, and his price tags around fifty million, uh, and he's twenty eight. It's not going to happen, is it, guys? You know what I mean? So, I, I've seen some FSG out people making a big deal of, of this, like, oh, you know, our club rivals are doing this, but our club's going for James Ward Prowse. Liverpool are going for James Ward Prowse. I don't believe that one fucking bit. One thing you might want to uh, listen to a little bit is reports linking us with Federico Chiesa. Is that how you pronounce his name? Some, you know, reports swimming around in Italy uh, saying that Liverpool might offer 30 million for him, you know, but closer to home, people are saying, mm, nah, it's not un it's not likely. Uh, but there's been a lot of chatter about it. It's just one of those ones I say, well, you know, passing eye, see what's being said. But I wouldn't say that there's anything going on too much there at the moment. Uh, right. So... Steven Gerrard, there was a video floating around of him as he looks at a return to management. Uh, I, I don't really understand it all. It says here, it says the Liverpool icon is edging closer towards return to management. Uh, and there's a video of him arriving at Etifak FC headquarters. It's all going on out there, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, obviously Saudi Arabia, there's a lot of money uh, going in. I, I think this is, I don't blame Steven Gerrard if he wants to go uh, and try himself. But 
I can't help but think that I don't know. He's got to. I don't know. I don't know about Steven Gerrard and, and management yet, but we'll have to wait and see. Everything was going all right for him when he was uh, when he was in Scotland, wasn't it? Do you know what I mean? I think he did that Villa job too soon, and I don't know. I hope it works out for him, whatever he chooses to do. And um, if you're a young blogger, a young YouTuber, young podcaster, budding, you know, you want to do some. There's your thing. Start focusing on that Saudi Arabia. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well. I know fuck all about Saudi Arabia and football out there, don't well, no one in does either. But you make it joking, you go, right, I'm going to do this. I might do it myself. Do you know what I mean? What do you reckon? Should we start doing Saudi Arabian football coverage? I've thought about doing something before, like doing rugby coverage. I know fuck all about rugby. And when I was getting like so depressed with FSG, I was like, ah, fuck this, I need to follow something else. And I was going to do it more of a like a side interest, like, right, guys, right, fuck it. We, we, until FSG are going, we're going to follow uh, bowling, all right? And I was going to do live streams, <laughs> live streams to do with bowling. And shit like that, I don't know. Listen, I'm serious. I'll tell you what else. You want to consider doing a bit about women's football as well. Some, you know, All the girls are doing it. You need some fella on there with a bit of banter and personality using football terms that people understand. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm telling you guys, I told you these things. Ooh, 10 years ago, I said you need to do, get into women's football. I said MLS as well. It's not too late for the MLS. There is not a decent decent coverage of the MLS with a prop with proper football coverage. What I mean by that is our lingo. Do you know what I mean? The keeper, the goals. Do you know what I'm saying? Not like the, the goaltender are out like that. Cooking, telling you guys, you should listen to me. If I had the time to do it, I'd be doing it. Invest in me. I'll bring them all in. I'll get it all sorted. It will make fucking... Thousands this time next year will be millionaires. Right, what else have we got? I'm not talking about any of that shite. That's boring. Ryan Kent's gone to Turkey. Uh, he's gone to Fenerbahce, I believe. Not interested in that one bit. Alex Oxley Chamberlain in advanced Aston Villa talks. Advanced. Can you imagine that? Advanced. Uh, yeah, big, big word there. That's according to Football Insider, which we all know is a load of shite, just like that football transfers and... All the other shite that's out there, I'm thinking of excluding them from this this podcast, to be honest with you. Former Liverpool chief Christian Purcell has left his role at Aston Villa. Fucking shocking news that. There you go. That's how busy it is news-wise at the moment. Saudi Arabia targeting Roberto Firmino. I'm sure you've heard about that too. You know what I'm saying? They're coming from reports uh, from Spain. Obviously, he was linked with uh, Real Madrid. And now the Spanish media are saying, well, he's wanted by them in Saudi. You know what I mean? So... Uh, Football insiders David Lynch has said talks are underway for Kone and Thuram. I think he said this yesterday or the day before. If you're going to listen to David Lynch, then I've got some fucking ice to sell to you. All right, guys, and I'll send it out to you. I'll post it to you as well if you want. Free postage. All right, guys. People say to me, what do you think? Should I listen to David Lynch? It takes me an hour to get off the floor from fits of fucking laughter. Right. Um... Right. Ian Doyle at Liverpool Echo, he's been saying he talks some shite and all. A busy time then for new sporting director George Schmatke. <laughs> While predecessor Julian Ward put in the groundwork for McAllister's arrival, the handover is... The groundwork? It was a fucking contract release clause. You had to, it was a clause in the contract that had to be triggered for fuck's sake. The handover is now complete with George now taking the lead on all incoming and outgoing deals. Further bolstering the midfield remains a priority. Although Liverpool's desire to refresh their engine room was prompted open season in terms of players being linked, whether it be agents looking to raise the profile of their client or seeking a better contract from their present club. But one area where Liverpool are certainly looking is centre-back, as admitted by Jurgen Klopp last month. It would be slightly overstating matters to say the heart of the defence is a ticking time bomb. But with Virgil van Dijk and Joe Matic both in their 30s, the latter entering their last 12 months of his contract, and Joe Gomez struggling for consistency in the position, it would be a proactive move from Liverpool, particularly with one or both of Nat Phillips and Reese Williams likely to have suitors this summer, if not this summer. A new centre-back will arrive inside the next 12 or so months. A left-sided central defender is the ideal, and one with potential to grow into the position. It, again, we, we know all this. Once, once you, these fucking journalist guys, they're a lot of shit, do you know what I mean? Right, let's have a look. Uh, now, that's garbage. Right, let's have a look at the mainstream media. So, it is mainstream media, so let's cut out the stupid blogs. Because there's no point me like, having to explain this stuff to you all the time. 
The Guardian, Arsenal close to a 100 million pound, a 100 million pound deal to sign West Ham's 24-year-old England midfielder Declan Rice. The Guardian also says Man City manager Pep Guardiola plans to leave the club when his contract expires in 2025. Thank fuck for that. Talk Sport will include them. Leipzig will want a fee of at least £75 million if they are to sell Croatia defender Josko Gavardiol to Manchester City. City. Uh, stutter rap. Who remembers that? Google it. Stutter rap uh, on YouTube and thank me later. Uh, Foot Mercato uh, and Francois. Fr- French? French? Uh, Man City rejected PSG's offer to include Italy midfielder Marco Verratti and Italy keeper Gianluigi Luigi Donnarumma as part of a deal to sign Portugal playmaker Bernardo Silva from the treble winners. The Evening Standard say Chelsea have made Cameroon international Andre Onana their primary target as they look to bring in a new keeper and Inter Milan wants at least £50 million for a 27-year-old. Sky Sports say Man United are continuing talks with Chelsea about England midfielder Mason Mount but there is still a gap in valuation between the two clubs to the 24-year-old. No fucking wonder. They also say, Sky Sports, that United are likely to make a move for Tottenham striker Harry Kane. As Spurs, Spur, sorry, are unlikely to make a move for Harry Kane. As Spurs do not want to sell him, especially to another Premier League side. Sky Sports add that Tottenham are set to contact Brentford to discuss a fee for Spain keeper David Raya. But both Spurs and fellow suitors, Manchester United, are reluctant to pay the £40 million the Bees want for the 27-year-old. The Guardian said Zaha uh, at Palace, the Palace winger, is set to turn down a £30 million a year offer to join Saudi Arabian side Al Nasr with PSG and Marseille interested in signing the Ivory Coast forward on a free transfer this summer. The Telegraph. Newcastle United are preparing a bid for Wolfsburg's 22-year-old German midfielder Felix Nemetcher, who is expected to cost about £15 million. And they're also looking at France midfielder Kefren Turam. Vote Ball International. They say Dutch midfielder Frankie de Jong, who was a target for Manchester United last year, expects to be playing for Barcelona next season and the 26-year-old is likely to be key to manager Xavi's plans. The Express and Star say Aston Villa are looking to bring in Sevilla sporting director Monchi, who worked with manager Unai Emery at the Spanish club. Football London, Chelsea are expected to offload up to 10 players over the course of the summer transfer window. The Manchester Evening News say Christian Eriksen could help Manchester United in their pursuit of Atalanta and Denmark forward Rasmus Hushland, who is 20. And finally, Sport in Spain say Barcelona and Spain forward Ansu Fati is at odds with his agent Jorge Mendes and does not want to leave Barcelona for Wolves in a swap deal with Portugal midfielder Ruben Nevers. That's your lot, guys, on the mainstream uh, media rumours, if you like. Now, we're going to do a shout-out with the squad, the people that support this podcast, and then we'll take another look uh, at what's what, see if there's anything else that we need to discuss. You can support this podcast by going to www.coptalkpodcast.com. And for the cost of a coffee once a month, a cheap Spanish coffee, I've got to be honest with you, not one of them fancy Starbucks, you can become a supporter of the podcast. You get all them pesky adverts removed. And when I do private episodes, you can listen to them too. And eventually, at some point, it's going to become the Cop Talk membership, this on here, on YouTube, uh, you know, and I'm going to copy and do all the videos and the podcasts to the preferred platform of your choice. And then if you want to join the members' website, the VIP members' website, you can. So there's a lot coming to you guys if, you, uh, you know, if you're know if you a supporter of this podcast. And I keep an eye on who's been here a long time, all right? So uh, www.coptoppodcast.com if you want to join the squad uh, and help a brother out. It's like buying me a coffee or a, or a drink once a month, that's all. I don't make any money from this podcast, I can assure you guys. But it does come in uh, once a month and it pays a bill, all right? It might be a mobile phone bill or something, but it helps, okay? And I'm very, very grateful to the list uh, that's in front of me, the people that support this podcast. Now, there used to be a tier called Fan Tier. It's a legacy tier. Now, it's no longer available. I brought it in to help people. It was like, I don't know when it was, last year or something. It's not available anymore. But those of you that are still on it, I do appreciate you uh, taking advantage of that. So let's start with the supporters. And we do have, you know what I mean? We've got a new patron. We've had some new ones in the last week or so. And I'm fucking over the moon about that. I really am, guys. You've no idea how much like it makes me happy. So let's give a shout out to the supporters. All right. So we've got Liam Buckland and we've got James Braid. Right. Then we've got Wayne Brown and then we've got uh, Tom Brown and Simon and Phil and Mark Bingley. We've got Jimmy, Jamie Gilmore. We've got Harry, Amza, uh, Glynn, Clint and Aaron. 
And then we've got Vincent. Yes, Vincent is a new supporter of the podcast who signed up yesterday. And Vincent, I would just like to thank you very, very much uh, for joining the squad and for walking with me, brother. I really do appreciate that. Honestly, I really do. So that's the supporters. All right. And then we have what's called the legends. So we've got Craig Alford, Tyler, Dean, Williams, Paul MC, Matt Meeker, James Lee, Jack Wood, Jack Rudgley, Dave Kelly, uh, who is uh, another uh, new supporter of the podcast. He's a legend, Dave Kelly. And we've got Big Wave Dave. And we have uh, Andrew Evans as well. That's a legend. And then we have our royalty, Adam, David Sutcliffe, and Michael uh, Couchman. So... Before I sign off, I'm just doing some uh, some clicking around here. Uh, let's have a look. We had um, three new patrons uh, join us in, in, in the last week or so, something like that. Uh, yeah, about a week. So we've had Dave Kelly, Phil Walsh, uh, and Vincent that have all stepped up to support the podcast. And it's unusual. You know, I don't usually get many new patrons and stuff, you know, people just are loyal to stick with me and and whatever. So it's nice that we've got these new fellas on Dave, Phil and Vincent. So I'm very, very grateful for that, guys. Uh, And also, um, I'm just looking at my messages on here. Uh, Jack Rudgley sent me a a nice little message and he said, just wanted to say after following your content for nearly 12 years, it's currently the best I've seen, loving how authentic it is, especially with the kitchen videos. They're quite popular, them. Do you know what I mean? Um, and Paul MC, he said, just listen to today's podcast. This was earlier this week, uh, or might have been the end of last week. And he says, and the email from Adam is almost word for word the email I sent you this day last week. Uh, not sure if you got it. Uh, so I don't know if what that what's happened there. Um, I need to look. Let me just take a quick look. I mean, guys, you can log off now. I don't think we'll, we'll have a look at the... Um, we will have a look at uh, Liverpool news again in a minute, but it's important if someone's emailed me and I, and I haven't found a Reddit out, that's terrible. Uh, okay, I found one from Paul MC. I think he sent it maybe twice. Sometimes stuff goes into spam, you know. And... Um, Let's just go. He did send this a while ago. He says, thinking of the George appointment and its short term and also about the ownership, can't stop thinking it was something to do with the sale. So looking today and images of the stadium and getting work done, I couldn't stop but think of the time frame of completion of work, which coincides within the three-month clause in George's contract. So with the completion of the stadium, the club value would increase and little to no more work needed to be done by a potential new owner. FSG could also keep face and walk away saying they have left us in a healthy position. Just a thought, Paul MC, he, he sent that recently. Uh, I know I have had people say this to me as well. I did make reference to Paul, actually, in that 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 um, that suggestion, uh, but I didn't quote him by name on one of my Cop Talk videos, I think, because I wasn't sure if he'd want uh, to be included in the video. But, Paul, yeah, I'm sorry if I didn't read that out, mate. You know, I've got a fucking shocking memory. Please do tell me off, mate. Um, but I do appreciate that. And it is a kind of a... Um, a vibe. Um, sorry, it is a kind of a opinion that I uh, I share with you, mate. And I know I'm losing uh, my mind here because I've got so many browsers open. So uh, thank you for that, brother. Let me go back to uh, this page. So I think, listen, I think I've got you, all you guys. Listen, you must chase me up, guys. If I ever don't read some out, if I don't reply to a message, like you guys, you know, my patrons, you know, most important people out there, my patrons, my members on YouTube here, it's, if we, without you guys, I don't exist. I mean, there's no like, there's no exaggeration here, guys. Do you know what I'm saying? There's no exaggeration. It's, I don't take my support for granted from anyone, but it makes a difference to my life. Honestly, one per, can you imagine if every single person became a supporter of the podcast or a supporter of YouTube? We would piss cop talk, wouldn't we? I'd be able to make it so much better. But I can't do that. You know what I mean? I'm sat here on fucking old computers. <laughs> I bought this, I bought a new keyboard yesterday, right? I needed a new Apple Mac keyboard, right? Uh, I use Mac computers. Sometimes people say, get a PC, the cheaper. Yeah, you're right. But they don't have the software and that, that I use and that I'm accustomed to. And I did buy um, a PC a few years ago and it just wasn't the same. It, it just wasn't. Uh, and I couldn't afford this year or within the last year to get 
like a new iMac. The 24 inch iMacs now. I don't think you can get the 27 anymore. So I bought like uh, what is it? Uh, Mac Mini because they're about 800 or something like that. You know, I bought one of them, bought a monitor, and he was a little bit cheaper. You know what I'm saying? But like the keyboards, like are either old, like the Mac keyboards. Like yesterday, I was trying to work on on my computer, and every time I put some music on on the computer, the volume kept going down as if someone was pressing the the decrease volume. It was stressing me out. My other key, key, uh, Mac computer, similar similar sort of position. That's a Spanish keyboard, so the the layout's different. The one in front of me right now is a Spanish layout, and it does my head in. And um, like above the eight. And the nine, the the brackets are the wrong way around, and it it's just it just slows you down. Do you know what I mean? So I went on eBay. So I was like, ah, look, I can't fucking carry on like this. I'm going to buy myself. A, sorry, I went on Amazon. I'm going to buy myself a new Apple Mac keyboard. And as anyone knows, they're about hundred and nine quid. Do you know what I mean? Hundred quid, hundred and nine quid. And I'm like, I'm really reluctant, but I'm like, I've got to do it. Do you know? What I mean? I've got to do it. So I thought, I'm going to have a look on eBay and see if there's anything on that. I'm not buying second hand in case it don't fucking work. You know what I mean? And um, I see this one, I think, oh, that's a good bargain, that. 60 euros delivered from Ireland to here to Spain, right? I'm thinking I've got no import taxes on that because it's within the EU. I love that fucker. And it said brand new box and all that. I thought, I love it. So I bought it, paid for it. And then when it, the confirmation on my screen said, I saw in the writing, it said German QWERTY keyboard. I was like, oh, no. And I mentioned it on Twitter and someone said, well, you can realign the buttons. I said, I know, I've got a Spanish one. But that's why I'm buying it. Like, do you know what I mean? So... I managed to get my money back. Do you know what I'm saying? But what I'm trying to say here is when people support me, right, I can get like stuff like that. It means I can I can do more. Do you know what I mean? It might be a microphone, it might be a keyboard, a monitor. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to say I'm very grateful to people. So they're like the little three pounds, whether someone's a, on YouTube or a podcast, they all add up. Ten's thirty. Do you know what I mean? So I'm just trying to say I'm very grateful. All right. <laughs> so uh, and I'd, hopefully I'll get my money back on my fucking German keyboard right guys uh, I think I've done the lot for you today I've done the lot for you today not a lot I don't know if there's anything else we need to uh, to touch upon uh, on here let's have a quick refresh uh, let's have a look see if there's anything else since we've been recording uh, I, I don't I don't think there is no the last bit was Durian uh, Timber so yeah Okay, that's it, guys. Thanks to to my three new patrons in the last week. You really, really do uh, put a smile on my face, and, and you're a credit, so thank you. Some of you would support me if you could, and I know you can't. Don't worry about that. You're listening to the podcast. That is supporting me, right? Podcast at coptalk.com. If you want to drop me an email, do not cost you a penny. It gives people something to discuss. Don't ever think no one gives a fuck about your opinions. Your opinions are just as important as mine or anybody else that contributes here. All right. If there's something on you know on your mind, you can message me podcast at cocktalk.com. If you don't want your name reading out, make sure you say it at the very beginning of the email. Because I want to be private. Not wrong with that. I'm not going to do anything with your email address or anything. You know, so you're you're very welcome. This is your podcast, and we will uh, we'll discuss whatever you want to discuss. All right, guys. Thank you ever so much uh, for listening. Hopefully, I'll be back with you tomorrow. If no, 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 no. stop, stop, stop. Maybe tomorrow. I'm meeting Brian Patridge tomorrow. He's a long-time Cop Talk follower. Uh, he's out uh, on holiday in in the in the region with his lovely girlfriend, fiance, and um, I'm going to meet Brian tomorrow for a couple of pints because I like to meet my Cop Talk peoples. You know what I'm saying? So if there is going to be one tomorrow, it'll be in the morning, and it depends if there's any news. All right. Uh, if not, it's going to be a bit later in the week. But uh, I will be here as normal till tomorrow afternoon. So if there's anything I need to bring to your attention, I will do that all right guys thanks ever so much for listening uh please as well i'm, I'm doing a bit of streaming now on youtube.com forward slash duncan oldham uh, and some videos on there it would be a massive way of supporting me if you were to pop over there and give me a sub all right guys take it easy take care thanks for listening we'll speak real soon